In part 2 of this series we discuss five important rewards of walking with wisdom. All right, we're going to spend some time in God's word and then we we'll take some time to pray. Last Sunday uh we just started talking about wisdom walk. Um just you know we spending last Sunday and then today are uh, just encouraging us, drawing us into understanding the importance of walking with wisdom. So let's quickly recap a few things uh, that we said last Sunday. Uh, we said that wisdom is the main thing. Wisdom is the main thing, the principal thing. And so let's just go back and read Proverbs chapter 4 verses 5 through 9. Let's read it out aloud. Verse 5, get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my okay let me hear you verse 6 do not forsake her and she will preserve you love her and she will keep you wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding exalt her and she will promote you she will bring you honor when you embrace her she will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Solomon writes here verse seven: wisdom is the principal thing. It's the main thing. It's the most important thing. Or as the Message Bible puts it, it says, put it on the topmost of your list. Go after wisdom. Get it. Uh, because it, this wisdom, walking in wisdom will cause all these good things to take place in your life. If you will seek after her and a uh, you know go after wisdom desire for wisdom then all these things uh will will take place in your life and so we we talked about that and then we just try to explain or define what wisdom was uh we said just to put it very briefly a uh, wisdom is the ability to apply or use knowledge right so you have knowledge you have understanding you have all the information but how do you use it maybe to solve problems or uh, maybe to uh determine what is the right course of action to take uh maybe even to foresee things and, and uh, preemptively take action that's wisdom and and you know even in our workplaces that's what we get paid for nobody pays you because you have a degree they pay you because you know how to use what you've learned to solve real world problems they're not going to pay you because you can re- repeat what you learned in chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 <laughs> no they're going to pay you because you can take all that information and then solve problems uh come up with new solutions uh, or or you know it, 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 depending on the nature of your work uh sometimes you you come up with strategies sometimes you do forecasting of things all of that but all that is an expression of wisdom are you with me So we need as believers and as people engaged many of us are engaged in the marketplace uh, and just even for our daily lives uh, to walk with wisdom and the bible tells us wisdom is the main thing get wisdom we also said that wisdom is the combination of insight understanding and prudence we did we did cover all this last sunday so I'm not just not going into de- in the de- detail on these things but insight the ability to see beyond the surface understanding the ability to comprehend uh, the situation as a whole rather than looking at it from one narrow side of things and then prudence it's just practical common sense down to earth what do you do now it's a combination of these things somebody says yeah this person's wise Um and last Sunday we did a very daring thing we summarized the book of proverbs with five statements I did have some reaction to that <laughs> but I just you know what were these five statements I hope you can remember this because if you uh I just keep these five simple statements in your mind you will uh, uh, you know keep your life aligned to almost anything and everything that's stated in the book of proverbs we gave these five statements I want you to just repeat them with me read them out with me number 1 always and all things honor the lord always and all things honor the lord 
You're making decisions. Think about, is this decision I'm going to make, is it going to honor God or not? Simple question. It'll keep you in the way of wisdom. Second one, let's read it out. Always be listening, always be learning. So you're an incessant listener and learner. Some of us who don't want to learn, don't want to listen. Hey, we're putting ourselves in a disadvantageous position. But if you are a person who's willing to listen and learn, receive counsel, advise, listen to people, receive good inputs, a lot of things in Proverbs comes under this. Always be listening, always be learning. Willing to receive. Number three, let's read it out. Don't take what is not yours. Simple. A lot of things in Proverbs, this, this comes under this. Don't take what's not yours. Now, we Indians, we're very good at bargaining. But sometimes, in our bargaining, we actually end up taking what is not ours. Maybe the actual cost of the thing, I'm just using numbers just for illustration's sake. The actual cost of it is 100. Now, the, you know, the shopkeeper said 110. He wants to make a little profit. And you drive it down. No, 100. And you still want to bargain. No, 85. You know, now, whether you know it or not, you've gotten into a territory where you're taking what is not yours. Now, you leave the place thinking, wow, I really got a good deal. But you've left taking something that's not yours. I said, well, now I never bargain anymore. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we have to be fair. I don't want, you, don't want you to think about, you know, being taken for a ride and people abusing, misusing your trust or your goodwill. But at the same time, be fair. Don't take what is not yours. What is 10 rupees, 15 rupees different? What is it? Bless him with it. You've got plenty already. Amen? Just bless him with it. What's the big deal? It's better not to take what is not yours. Number four, let's read it. Don't keep what you should be giving away. Like we said last time, many times God blesses us in order to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. So you've got something in your hand. Somebody there is praying, oh God, give me this day my daily bread. And it's in your hands to bring it to that person. And if you hold back, now God will definitely be faithful and take care of that person through somebody else. But you've lost an opportunity to give, to bless somebody. And every time you bless somebody, remember the Bible says, he who waters, will be watered also himself. It's going to come back to bless you. So don't hold on to something that you really should be giving away. And number five, last one, is always and in all things walk in humility. Always and all things walk in humility. You know, no matter how God blesses you, no matter you know the heights that God takes you, walk in humility. In fact, the higher you go up, the lower you have to step down because God gives more grace to the humble. And the higher you go up, you need more grace to stand there. But how will you get more grace to occupy a higher place? It's by going down lower. Because God gives more grace to the humble. Are you with me? So you receive a promotion. You become the CEO. You become whatever, whatever. Hey, great. Step down lower. Because you need more grace in that place. Amen? Amen? So always, at all times, walk in humility and the grace of God will keep you, will empower you um, uh, to, uh, to walk in wisdom and all that. Today, what I want to do is just bring our attention to a few things on the rewards of wisdom. Uh, just to motivate us to seek God with wisdom. And then I'm going to close by just reminding us that we, you and I as believers actually have access to the wisdom of God. 
that you and I as believers can, uh, can intentionally, purposefully tap into God's wisdom uh, in everything that we uh, have, have to do here on earth. So let me just, you know, there's a lot in Proverbs concerning the rewards of wisdom. Well, let me just bring our attention to a few things this morning. Just five things so you can uh, keep count and know when I'm going to stop. Number one, honor and favor. When you and I walk in wisdom, we are positioning ourselves for our lives to be clothed with honor and favor. We all desire honor. Honor comes in so many ways. Promotion, maybe in your workplace. Uh, honor, recognition from people. And all of that, honor and favor. Favor, divine favor on your life. Now, and in all of these things, I'm just bringing our attention to a couple of scriptures. Proverbs 3, verse 35. Let's read it out, please. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. The wise will inherit glory. That's honor expressed as maybe, you know, in your, depending on your life situation, maybe it comes as a promotion, uh, maybe it comes as a, a, a a, a, a good reputation, maybe it comes as a recognition, honor comes on your life when you walk with wisdom. The wise will inherit honor. Proverbs 14, verse 35. The king's favor, let's read it please. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. Let's read that again. The king's favor is toward a wise servant. Now you can Put it in our modern day language. The boss favors a worker, employee who is wise. This is the Bible. Not your management book. <laughs> the Bible is saying. God is saying. You know, the person in leadership. He's going to favor somebody. He's going to favor a worker. He's going to favor an employee. He's going to favor somebody who is walking with wisdom. So you walk with wisdom. You ask God for wisdom in whatever, you know, whatever role you have in your place of work or in your area of responsibility. Ask God for wisdom. And say, you know, you want your boss's favor? You walk with wisdom. Now, most of us understand, you know, that the workplace can be a very harsh environment. Because everybody is trying to undercut somebody else. Everyone is trying to put the other person down. And most often happens behind your back. So unless you have eyes or the back of your head, you won't know that it's actually happening. But that's the workplace. It's very hostile. And everybody is trying to clamor for the attention of the manager or the boss. Because review time is coming. And you need to get a good rating in order to get promoted or get your as a raise in your salary and all of that. And, and, and so, you know, you, you come under so much pressure because all your peers are doing their dramatics. And if you're not careful, you, you can also fall into the same trap. I also need to play my tricks. But remember what the Bible says. The king's favor is towards a wise servant. You take all of that word. God, your word. I'm putting your word to work in my place. Or my workplace. My situation. I want to walk with your wisdom. And let your wisdom that is seen through my work. Give me the favor that I'm looking for. Can you do that? That's your trick. That's your strategy. What do you think? It's a good strategy? Yeah. Because it's the word of God, God will back you up. So when you go to your workplace, say, so God, I have one strategy. I'm going to walk in the wisdom of God. I'm going to do my work with God's wisdom. And, the, and, and your word says that the king's favor will be towards a wise worker, a wise servant, a wise employee. And let your wisdom come through my work. Let your wisdom be seen through, you know, what the solutions I provide, the designs I do, uh, the way I interact, the way I do my sales calls, or whatever, my way I do my projections or, or forecasting, whatever I'm doing, let your wisdom be seen. And I believe your wisdom will get me the favor I need. Amen? And God's word will work in your life situation. 
Just what? Number two. So let's sum it up this way. Wisdom, wisdom walk leads you into places and positions of honor and favor. Let's say it together. Wisdom walk leads me into places and positions of honor and favor. Let's say it one more time. Personalize it. Wisdom walk leads me into places of positions of honor and favor. Number two. When you walk with wisdom, you are on an upward trend. Not on a downward spiral. Proverbs 15 verse 24. Let's read this please together. The way of life winds upward for the wise. Let's read it again. The way of life winds upward for the wise. You're walking with wisdom. What's your trajectory? Upward. Not a downward spiral. The way of life winds upward for the wise. So how do you ascend? How do you go up in life? How do you get to higher places in, 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 in your life situations? We walk with wisdom. I like how the uh, uh, easy to read version puts this. It says, what wise people do leads to life. What wise people do leads to life. It leads you to better things. It leads you to life when you walk with wisdom. So, keep this in mind. All of us, we want to say, okay, I want to move up. I want to get into a better place. I want to, you know, uh, uh, of course you have to be growing and increasing and so on. But what's the key? It's walking with wisdom. Walking wisely. So let's sum it up. Let's say this together. Wisdom walk takes my life on an upward ascent and not on a downward spiral. Right? So wisdom walk. Takes your life upward. Takes your life upward. Number three. And you and I walk with wisdom. We solve problems. We're able to overcome challenges. Now all of us will be faced with problems and challenges in life. You're never going to have Life that does not have challenges. You're going to face it. Unexpected things. Things that you didn't even think would come your way. We're all going to face it. And we have challenges in all different areas of life. It could be in your workplace, in your family, uh, in relationships. Sometimes it's financial. Different challenges. Small and big. All kinds. But in those situations, I want to encourage you and me to pray and ask God for wisdom. It's as simple as God, give me wisdom. Show me how to handle this situation. Ask God for it. How do I do this, God? And before we close, we will point us to the fact that we do have access to the wisdom of God. But we need to tap into it. And it simply means just praying, asking God, Lord, what do I do? I look at one verse of Scripture, Proverbs 21 and verse 22. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. So here's a picture of a, of a city that is filled with warriors, soldiers, strong on the inside. And they are there protecting, guarding, keeping. Now you you want to get in there. You want to overtake it. You want to conquer it. What the Bible is saying is, a wise man can get this job done. He can get it done. He can scale the city of the mighty and pull it down by wisdom. So you may face a situation that is, is, is uh, you know, uh, as hostile or is, is, is as impregnable as a city that is filled with armed soldiers. And that's your challenge. Well, a wise man can scale the city and pull it down. All you and I need is the wisdom of God and we can solve it. But we got to ask God, Lord, give me your wisdom. I'm faced with a situation like this. I'm faced with a challenge. I'm faced with a problem. I 
I'm asking you, God, give me wisdom to take this, to overcome it. And he will give you. And you will be able to solve the problem, overcome the challenge. It can be done. Tell your neighbor, it can be done. Tell your neighbor on the other side, it can be done. Right? So you face something like this, a city that's so armed, it's so, uh, you know, it's like, man, you cannot take the city. No, it can be done. One word of wisdom. The key, the wisdom that God gives me will be the key by which I will take the city. I'll overcome this challenge. I'll overcome this situation. And just listen to God. Number four, this last two. So let's, sorry, make that statement. Let's say it together and personalize it. Wisdom walk enables me to solve problems and overcome challenges. Say it again. Wisdom walk enables me to overcome problems and so solve problems and overcome challenges. Number four. Wisdom walk enables us to build and prosper. Proverbs chapter 24 verses 3 and 4. Let's read it please. Through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So how do you build something? So this is a picture of building something and then seeing it prosper, seeing it flourish. It says through wisdom, through wisdom you build. With understanding you can see everything flourishing and increasing. So many of you are building. You're building businesses. Building families, building your children, uh, maybe building your professional careers, whatever. You, your various things. You want them to grow. You want them to get better and stronger and bigger year after year. None of us want things to stagnate. And we want these things to prosper. We want them to flourish. What's the key? Through wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it flourishes, established. And through knowledge, all of these things begin to increase and flourish. So get wisdom, get understanding. You know, we tell young people, before you get married, please go through APC's marriage preparation course. Now they ask, oh, okay, sure, sure. They think it's a two-day class. So it's, yes, I will. You know. And we say, but it takes five months. Ooh. Five months. Months. I've got to wait five months to finish this course and then get married. But listen, through wisdom, a house is built. The knowledge and understanding, you need that. So, what is five months thinking of the next 50 years of your life? That five months, you're going to get some wisdom that will enable you uh, to establish and build your home for the next 50 years. So young people, whenever you're ready to get married, remember, five months, at least, you say, you generally say five months, but, you know, but you have to, you know, you we take you through that course, marriage preparation. And our counselors are great. They, they really take care of people and we follow up with them. So we don't just get you married and send you off. You know, we tell them to just follow up first year, second year. See how they're doing even after they get married. So that you know, we, just, we want to build strong, healthy marriages. But it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom. You need that understanding. You need that knowledge. And, there, and the church is there to help you with it. To give that to you. To make sure that you know, you're know you set for the next 50 years. Uh, but if you can invest that five months. And then just, you know, they, they'll follow up with you for a year. At least the next two years. We've told them, you know, please follow up them after two years after they get married. Uh, so uh, they'll, they'll be there. Just take care of you. Make sure you're set. But remember, through wisdom, a house is... So whatever, now in this marriage, this is one example, but uh, there will be uh, other situations, whether you're building your business and so on, wisdom. That's a reward of walking wisdom. Last one. 
Wisdom brings, this is the next few verses, wisdom brings strength, safety, and success. Proverbs 24, verses 5 and 6. Let's read it together, please. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So wisdom brings strength, safety, and success. And we need that. We need strength for the journey. We want to, uh, if possible, uh, avoid the pitfalls and not necessarily have to learn hard lessons by going through it, but we can avoid it. Safety and success. We want to see a good reward of whatever you're doing. But that is it. That becomes possible when we walk with the wisdom of God. Walk with this. So let's say this together. Wisdom walk and show strength, safety, and success. Now, in closing, I just want to bring our attention to this truth that as believers, we have access to the wisdom of God. Amen? God is the source of all wisdom, which we said last Sunday. And you and I are his sons and daughters. We are his children. And the Bible says that God has already made Christ to be unto us wisdom. He's already done it. He said, look, I'm making myself, I'm making myself available to, uh, he is all wisdom. And God has made Christ, who is all wisdom, available to us. So none of us can say, ah, I don't have wisdom. But I don't have access to wisdom. You can't say that. God has already said. He's made Christ to be to you wisdom. He's already done it. So with all that God has made available from heaven for you and me. He's made Christ to be our wisdom. And who is Jesus? The Bible says in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the person, the one in whom are, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Has been made to you wisdom. He says, this is yours, for you. So you and I have access to the wisdom of God. And think about the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us He is the spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of counsel, of might, of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. So I want to encourage you parents to pray over your children. Because God said, I will pour my spirit upon your children. So you pray for them. God, your spirit is upon my son and daughter. Now Joshua and Ruth are both away uh, and and so, you know, but we pray. He said, God, you said you poured your spirit on our children. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, power. He's a spirit of counsel. He's a spirit of might. So, Lord, we declare this on Joshua and Ruth. We pray for them. Because that's what they need. And as parents, I encourage you, pray. Declare the spirit of wisdom over your children. The same thing for yourself. The Holy Spirit is in you. Holy Spirit is upon you. He is the spirit of wisdom. Just believe it. There is no lack of wisdom. There's no, there's no need to lack wisdom. Amen? So, I want to encourage you. Having understood the importance of walking with wisdom. The fact that wisdom is available to you as a believer. Now begin to tap into it. And it's as simple as saying, God, give me wisdom. I'm faced with a situation. Give me wisdom. How do I solve this? What is the right course of action? God, uh, or if you're, you're journeying along in a certain way, say, God, please open my eyes so that I can foresee things and you know, take action. God, two years from now, five years from now, what should I do today to be prepared for what's coming up two years from now? What's coming up five years from now? The Bible says the prudent foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. So be prudent. Ask God. Lord, show me what's coming up. In my life, the journey I'm taking, how do I prepare for what's two years ahead, five years ahead? Show me now. And God will do it. You, it's you who initiates that prayer and say, God, show me. How do I do this? Amen? Tap into the wisdom of God. It's available for you whatever your situation is. And through wisdom, you 
advance. Amen? We're going to take time to pray right now. Worship team, could you please come up? And uh, whatever your life situation is, you may have come in this morning expecting answers, expecting divine interventions, expecting God to move in your life. And we're going to take time to pray for that. Just believe God for your healing, your miracle, your deliverance. I know we already prayed earlier. We just want to pray again. There's nothing too hard for God. Jeremiah said, Our Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. God, you are great in counsel. You're great in deeds. There's nothing too hard for you. No matter what your situation is, there's nothing too hard for God. The wisdom you need is available to you. And we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he's alive. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our miracle worker. Amen? So we're going to take a few moments this morning as we uh, just pray and believe God that he will, meet mirac- he will meet our need. He will work miracles, touch our lives, and, and answer prayer. Let's rise to our feet, please. And uh, I want you to take a few moments right now just to pray and ask God for wisdom, first of all. Just based on what you've heard this morning, say, God, I'm in a situation like this. Please give me your wisdom. Lord, I need to know how to solve this problem. Whatever it is, you pray personally. You know your own situation. You say, God, I need wisdom in this. Or I'm planning to go this way, God. Give me your wisdom. Or how do I, what are the next steps I need to take? Some of you may want that. What are the next steps I should take? It's okay. Now, never mind if you are, if right today, you, you, you know, you realize you've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. Never mind. Don't condemn yourself. There is wisdom that can bring you out of your situation, that can set you on the path of success, that can make you stronger and cause you to flourish. There is no problem that is too complex for God when He says, sorry, I don't have an answer. No. So no matter what situation you're in this morning, you pray and say, God, okay, I may have made mistakes, but God, you have wisdom for my situation. You have wisdom for my life. That will cause me to flourish. That will cause me to thrive. So I want you to pray. Just ask the Lord for wisdom. So worship team, just play softly. Just play on your instrument softly, please. And then after that, we're going to pray. Just go ahead, take some time to pray. Father, we thank you that you are our God. You said in your word, you made Christ to be our wisdom from God. The one in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You've made him to be our wisdom. Father, I pray over your people present here, God, and those watching us live, wherever they are. Pray over people in life situations, whatever they are faced with. Let the wisdom of God fill their hearts and minds. Let them receive, Father, insight, understanding, and prudence to handle whatever situations they are faced with. Even to come out of problems, to come out of difficulty, let your wisdom cause them to rise. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might. Fill the hearts of your people here with your wisdom, your understanding, your counsel. Thank you, Lord. Father, 
And as we pray for people this morning, you want the sick to be healed. You want the broken to be made whole. God, you want those who are oppressed to be set free. That is your will. You want people to prosper, to do well, to receive of your goodness. So do it, Lord, in this place. As we acknowledge who you are. You are the Lord who heals us, who delivers us. You sent your word, you make us whole. As we sing, I just want you to expect God to touch you in this place. believe God for healings, miracles, deliverances. Even as you are touched by God right now, I want you to just come forward and give your testimony. If you receive a healing right here in this place right now, and, and you can tell, I just want you to free, feel free to come, just share what God has done. As we pray, expect God to heal, expect God to heal, and then, you know, just do what you couldn't do. Check your body. If you need to go back to the doctor and check it, that's perfectly fine, but if there's something you can check right here, right now, this morning, do it. So we can give God the glory. Know that he's done our work right here, right here in this place. Uh, if there's somebody here, you, you've had an uh, injury to your right ankle. And I'm just seeing that a right ankle injury uh, thing. It's, it's still hurting. Maybe the bones didn't set, whatever. 
Just receive that healing right now. Begin to check that ankle. Stamp on it. Check it. God heals you. And you receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Just check right now. Shoulder. Healing to the shoulder. If you have a problem here right on your shoulder. Just receive healing. Or pain in your elbows. Just receive healing right now. And Father, whatever other condition that people are praying, expecting healing, let the power of God touch them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you just say, Lord, I receive. I receive my healing right now. You're in the presence of God and I declare your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if it's a small thing that you're suffering, like a sinus condition that's been troubling you, even if it's a simple thing like that, just say, Lord, I receive my healing for that. Could be something bigger, something complex, but doesn't matter. God is our healer. There's nothing too difficult for God. Just receive healing. I command tumors and growths to disappear in the name of Jesus. Even cysts that are actually causing problems in your body, let them disappear in the name of Jesus. Go get it checked. Go get your scans done or whatever. Let the healing be verified. Father, we release your healing in the name of Jesus. Let healings take place right now in the name of Jesus as we are standing in your presence. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. I take authority over every spirit of infirmity, every spirit causing sickness and disease. I expel you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let healing flow right now. Even the spirits causing pain leave in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, spirits that are holding onto the nerves leave now in the name of Jesus. And God, let healing take place right now. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you, we praise you. Father, we also pray for people going through life challenges and difficult situations. God, we pray for a release of divine intervention, God. In life situations, let there be a release of divine interventions, God. We just thank you, Father. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even you know, if you've been you've applied for a bank loan and, and you know you're you're waiting for that, I just want to release intervention for you. That you will receive it. Just to help you in this time of need. Let there be an intervention. The favor come on that loan application. You can receive it. Father, we pray for release of the one intervention in the life situations. We thank you. And we bless you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for release of jobs for people who are looking for jobs. Let there be a supernatural intervention in their lives. Let them know that you've done it. It can be only one way by which that job came into their life because you did it, Father. So let them know that you've done it for them. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen, Amen. All right, let's take a few testimonies. If something happened to you right here, right now, this morning, we're able to verify it. We'll take a few moments. Just come forward. We can take testimonies to celebrate Jesus in this place. Just raise your hand. Do you have a testimony? Something happened to you right here, right now. Uh, we can get the mic to you or you can come forwards. Anybody? Something happened to you right here, right now. Just raise your hands. Okay. Don't feel shy. Don't see any hands. Anybody here? Something happened right here, right now. I don't see any testimonies, but I don't see any hands raised, but go home, get sure, Vishal, you have something to say? Go ahead, pick the mic. Right here, Vishal. Sorry. Uh, hello, church. Um, so earlier today, while we were worshiping, when the worship team was leading us, um, there, there was this, I don't know, there was this really overwhelming feeling and uh, both Becky and I immediately just got on our knees so I knew it wasn't just me and it felt like God was right there you know God was in front of me and I was really uh, very nervous to open my eyes 
because it felt like he was right in front of me but it felt like I wasn't ready to see him but uh this this isn't for me this is for a friend of mine uh so he very recently lost a very dear one he lost his fiance and he's been troubled by it right this was uh, almost a week ago but when i felt that overwhelming feeling it felt like god was telling me don't worry you know like he gave me the assurance that this friend of mine has received that peace of mind he has let go of that pain he is set free and i know that when i leave church and when i go and meet him that he is going to be glad he has made his peace with it you know and it is just a reminder that god is great god is amazing you know i mean for us some of us might not be able to relate but for him it's a whole emotional torture and just to be set free from that is amazing right so please yeah. god so let us know vishal how it goes god bless you thank you all right anyone else I want to quickly come forward and share something that happened a healing miracle took place all right uh the other way we do it is you're always welcome to please go back to the doctor check send your testimony in by email and we will be able to share it with everyone else all right before let's just get ready to close but before we close what we like to do is to give an invitation for people for those who have never received Jesus into their lives I want to give an invitation to anyone here this morning who have never received Jesus into your life. I just want to lead you in a simple prayer. And you feel this morning that you've come here, and like Vishal said, maybe you encountered God's presence. Maybe you just felt in your heart, I need to give my life to Jesus. We want to help you do that. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And if you'd like to do it, just pray that with me. I would be delighted that you did it. Let's just take a moment to pray. Does anyone here you feel in your heart that you want Jesus to forgive you your sins make you his own make you his child the bible tells us that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross he was buried and the third day he rose up again and if anyone believes in him the bible says we will not die but we will have eternal life and you feel like you want to do that this morning just pray this prayer with me please if you've never done this before say lord jesus come into my life forgive my sins make me a child of god and help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life i pray this in jesus name Amen. Amen. Anybody? You pray this prayer with me for the very first time. Just like to see your hand. If you did this with me this morning for the very first time, just raise your hand. Our greeters will come to you, give you a packet that we like to give anybody who prays this prayer with us for the very first time. Anybody here this morning? You've done this for the very first time. Is there one hand up here? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Just raise your hands. If you did this with me this morning, God bless you. Our greeters will come to you and give you a welcome a, a, a bag that has free resources in it. Along with that there's a card that says decision card. If you could please write your name on that card, just hand it back to them. They'll receive it back from you. Uh there'll be somebody from the church calling you and just guiding you through how to use those resources. And of course, our friends who brought you uh I will always be there to help you. All right, let's close. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power at work. Thank you for touching our lives. And Father, I pronounce on your people that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of your Holy Spirit will continue to abide with us all the time. In Jesus name. Everyone say amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org/biblecollege. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.